Welcome to Making Stuart Model Steam Plant, this is part 8. Working on the third Stuart S50 steam engine to find the cause of the poor running and rectify the problem. The time has come to have a look at the piston inside the cylinder. All three of these Stuart S50 steam engines which were sent to me by a customer in the USA to allow me to find the best of the three which will drive the generator on the steam plant. These are very old S50s. The cylinder castings are now cast iron and not gunmetal, which is better because they don't rust. After slackening all the bolts using a spanner, I'm using a small socket to remove them. And so they don't get lost, I put them all in a small red plastic box. I work on quite a broad range of model steam engines, and when you're working on the smaller ones, you have to work on them with the right amount of pressure. Especially when you're tightening the bolts, this is not a car cylinder head and therefore the bolts do not need torquing up to a ridiculous extent, all they do is shear off. Working on steam engines of this size is a little bit like clock making, albeit maybe a slightly larger than usual clock, it's definitely not watch making but you have to be very careful not to break things as you dismantle them. In order to remove the piston from the cylinder I need to unscrew it from the crosshead. That's why I've removed the crosshead guides so I can undo the lock nut. There is a slot in the piston, and this is a good thing, or it would be if my screwdriver fitted it. But it doesn't, because the slot is very thin. Usually when I make pistons for miniature steam engines, I just drill a couple of holes, and then use a pair of circlip pliers to remove the piston. This piston wasn't tight, and I removed it using a very small screwdriver. I unscrewed the lock nut from the end of the piston rod, so now I can withdraw the piston and have a look at it. Wait for it, wait for it, yes here it is. And someone has machined a slot in the piston for an o-ring, which is a great idea if you remember to fit the o-ring. Normally, Stuart pistons in models of this size don't use piston rings, they just have oil grooves. And in this clip you can see the remains of the oil grooves at either side of the large groove in the centre. Time to look in my box of steam grade silicone o-rings to find a suitable o-ring to fit the piston. The board of the cylinder is 5 eighths of an inch, and I could not believe it, I do not have a silicone o-ring in my collection which is 5 eighths of an inch outside diameter. As a temporary measure, I've stretched a half inch o-ring into the gap, but it's too big to fit in the cylinder. Which means that the groove in the piston is not deep enough. That's quickly remedied by going over to the Boxwood lathe and using a very thin parting tool to make it a bit deeper. A bit of information when you use O-rings as piston rings. You must use a silicone piston ring or a Viton piston ring with exactly the same diameter as the diameter of the cylinder. If the groove in the piston isn't deep enough and puts pressure on the O-ring, pushing it too hard against the wall of the cylinder, it will prematurely wear out. You can find out all you need to know about clearances for O-rings by just googling O-ring clearances or something similar. Now I've machined this groove a little bit deeper, the piston pushes into the cylinder and you wouldn't know there was an O-ring there. I've refitted the lock nut and here I'm just locking the piston rod against the crosshead, without exerting excessive pressure on the parts. If you look at these crosshead guides, you will see two things that are wrong. One is, the spacers are too wide and look stupid, and the spacers are too short, because when you tighten the bolts, everything locks solid. I intend to make four new spacers that are the perfect length for the job. Temporarily though, I'm just inserting washers so I can test the engine. Before refitting the front cylinder cover, I thought it would be a good idea to see if the engine worked first. And it did, running quite well in single acting mode. Because there's a lot of play in the crosshead, the engine may knock a little bit. But I'll correct this when I rebuild the engine. Reiterating my earlier comments, here I'm refitting the bolts to the cylinder cover. And I'm using a very small socket, I am not torquing them up, they do not need to be tight. There's a gasket in between the metal parts, and all you need to do is gently nip up all the bolts. If you're too heavy handed, you will shear them off. Over the years I've seen many sheared bolts on miniature steam engines. Now with the piston ring fitted, the engine runs a lot better. And I'm having to apply a lot of pressure to the flywheel, 
to put a load on the engine. It is knocking a bit because the crosshead's loose, but that's not a problem, I'll fix that in due course. The main thing is that there's plenty of power and the beats are very even. Please do not write in and ask me why I run steam engines at a high speed. You may have noticed that I repair and rebuild a lot of steam engines and I need to make sure that they run OK and no bits fall off. When I lift the engine off my workbench, which is designed to be a soundboard, it's very quiet. Here's a useful tip. Place a piece of Scotch-Brite underneath the engine and it also remains quiet owing to the reciprocating forces. And that's it for now. Engine number three is definitely the best of the three and this is the one that I'm going to use to build into the steam plant after it's been totally rebuilt. I've ordered some 5 eighths of an inch diameter silicone piston rings for my collection and I'll fit one of those to replace this stretched half inch one that I fitted just for the video. And that's it for now. I'd just like to say, as always, stay healthy, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says video playlists and by doing that you can find other videos that you may like to watch and by using the playlists you can actually watch the videos back to back.